Hello there, it's John Sadiq here. I hope you're doing really, really well. I'm, um, it's Sunday morning and I thought I'd make a little video blog. I posted a little something on Facebook uh, this morning. I got up at six o'clock this morning uh, to do my meditation and um, I had some editing to do for the new poetry collection that's coming out that my editor has suggested, or at least I wanted to look at the edits. Some of them I took, some of them I didn't take. That's the the reality of editing, you know, you are the writer, you have the final, the final say in things. And when I posted it on my Facebook, I, uh, I talked about how, um, how this, this week has been the beginning of my, my new life and, uh, and how marvellous it's been. Uh, but it's taken a great deal of courage to change because for, I don't know how long now, 1991 I started writing. How long's that? 24 years. I started writing 24 years ago and um, I didn't stop for a long, long time. And uh, I haven't even stopped now, really. Uh, it's just that things have changed a great deal. But what can happen is, is that something that is uh, initially a freedom is actually part of our route to freedom. And at the time, there's an explosion of energy and you have a great deal of, uh, you know, focus and, and, and excitement about something and you get right in there. And, uh, and for me, I built an entire life out of that initial explosion. And uh, all along underneath, since I was like a child, since I was like six years old, I had a sense of something much more in the background, you know, that life was much more and what freedom was. And... Um, and the writing has been so kind to me. It has been so amazingly kind. And uh, it's taken me around the world. I met my partner because of it. Um, I've earned a living for over 20 years. Uh, I bought this house, you know, the car sitting outside. That's all bought with poetry, you know. And uh, no little second job hidden away in the background or no rich parents or anything like that. Not there's anything wrong with coming from money or anything, but, you know, I didn't have those things and, and writing has given me all of that stuff. So uh, when I found myself starting to think about leaving that world or coming away from that world somewhat, it caused, um, it was like leaving somebody that I'd been married to, I suppose, a long marriage. And, um, uh, and you know, was I really going to go? Could we stay friends? All these questions. <laughs> uh, it's really quite interesting. I was at a, a big festival few weeks ago uh, in John the Poet mode and somebody who's known me for a very long time I won't name names uh, said to me backstage is that it are you leaving are you leaving and was very angry with me actually very very angry for daring to um, possibly get out uh, and it's quite interesting it's that sort of thing that has made me really think about going not in reaction to people but just in every world that we operate in, we can either operate in that world in consciousness and with life flowing through us, or it can be an acquisitive thing, you know? And, and for me, writing was always about, at first it was just about having an identity. It was about actually sounding my voice for the first time ever. I grew up in a difficult family and then in a, a very difficult town uh, you know, mugged frequently by skinheads and things like that, you know. And um, I'm not playing the victim or anything, but just very difficult. And felt like the victim at the time, very much actually. Very, very um, caught up with that stuff at the time. And so my first writings were almost like just expressing myself for the first time. And uh, in quite fiery terms a lot of the time. And, and this stuff kind of caught fire with other people quite quickly and and you know my, my kind of route began the danger of that of course is is that you begin to identify with the thing that you're doing you see it as part of your identity um and rather than the flow of life and <clears throat> and then it becomes a mask then it becomes something that you do and uh, i never wanted that relationship with writing actually and i found myself in the last few years just really not enjoying the world I was in at all and finding the kind of the egoic stuff 
uh, people really craving fame and uh, not working on their craft, you know, but, but kind of, you know, building the website and uh, uh, telling everybody they're a poet and, and all this stuff, uh, you know, that's their path and that's their karma and, and, and good luck to anybody who sets out on that path. It's a, it's an insane world. It's very hard, the writing world. And, um, uh, <clears throat> and you just have to kind of try to find your own way through it. And with my last sort of two or three books, you know, Full Blood, Recital and so on, it was very much uh, me doing the best that I could. Uh, and yet even doing the best that we can is not the right thing to do. Doing the best that we can is not the right thing to do. And since I had my awakening, for want of a better word, since my kind of uh, Satori experiences that have happened throughout my life, my experiences of kind of literally life coursing through me and being life itself, which we all have, we all have and we all know that taste of freedom. Uh, but for me, it kind of joined into an almost continuous thing, you know, uh, a couple of years ago now so that I realized that I'm not the mind and I'm not just my emotions uh, but there's actually a witness to all that which is the life of me I've been you know thinking well talk to other people about this stuff this came through very very clearly that I need to talk to other people about this stuff almost as if there's a, a, a loving voice telling me to do that and so that's my service now is to move in this new direction and it's always what I've wanted to do. So, you know, the question would be if, if I've done this in the past, you know, if writing was freedom for me before and now I'm experiencing freedom and excitement about this new life, will the same thing just happen? You know, will it become a mask too? Will it just become my job? You know, and I guess if you're, you're doing something and it becomes part of how you earn your living and so on, there's a, there's a real danger of ego taking over. So the only check that we have against that is the truth of our own practice and the truth of our own lives. And there's no effort to be made in being based in one's consciousness. It looks like there's an effort to be made because we've, we've learned to think that the mind is our life. You know, it's a bit like I was talking to a friend yesterday, uh, the other day, uh, and it's a bit like painting a room, uh, you know, a particularly beautiful colour, you know, let's say like this room here. Farrow and ball eggshell, you know, uh, or whatever it is. And <clears throat> it's a beautiful colour. And then we mistake the colour for the room. And we've actually, in fact, we mistake the decor for the house, you know, and that's what our mind is. The mind is this astonishing tool and it's beautiful and can be moved in all sorts of ways and can create all sorts of things and create structures and, and work as this fantastic instrument. It's not a thing that we want to just throw away and whatever, but anything that's just lived from trying to make ourselves into something or say, if I accumulate enough knowledge, then one day I will be free. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. You know, I don't know where this myth has come from, that one day we will be free if we do enough things. My myth in my life was always if I make myself a good enough person and interesting enough and purify myself enough, then somebody will love me. You know, these are the lies we tell ourselves and um, we are eminently lovable, uh, not because of our ego, but because of the life that's in us. And if we begin to identify with the life that's ours by actually connecting to it, Sunday morning and there are sirens in Hebden Bridge, it's like uh, downtown Hebden Bridge, you know, uh, if we even connect is the wrong word, you know, if we begin to actually just live from that place, which means we have to deal with the emotional stuff that's getting in the way, what Eckhart Tolle calls the pain body, uh, in Tibetan practice they call it Shenpa, uh, we, we begin to um, sort of sit with ourselves in life, in meditation for example. Meditation is not escaping from life, which is a, a spin that a lot of people put on it, you know, or uh, like with the, the mindfulness craze at the moment, which is kind of, you know, keeping count of the breath and noticing things. That, that can anchor you and it's very, very good. It's an amazing way out of say mental um, health issues and things like that to be anchored in that way. But it doesn't actually bring you into the life force that's yours. 
and uh, and that's what we really are and we don't need to get religious or spiritual about that every cell of our body everything that exists has a vibration to it and the only way that it can exist is because of that vibration you know we don't mistake the mind for the life you know and um and and, it, and that's what we are and um and it's quite easy to experience that so uh but at the same time it has taken like i say some courage to, to kind of let go of that because the mind is that my mind has identified with being a writer for so long and it's strange uh because now as i let go of it more and more i realize that actually writing is something that i really want to do and love doing and i'm working on a proposal for a book i'm just finishing off my um uh you know the the edits for elemental for which will be the next poetry book uh i've got enough material for a children's book which will be a, a really interesting mixture of things i'm going to attend to that a bit later in the year maybe just take myself off somewhere for a month and just um nail it down uh and so hopefully you might see that next year sometime but what did i want to say to you i just want to say to you If you're feeling stuck, like I was, and this me, what I'm saying here means anything to you, if it's resonating in any way, then come home to yourself. Come home to not even the emotions, but what lies underneath. You know, who sees those emotions? Who's the witness of those emotions? Who's the witness of the mind? That basic energy that's underneath, that's who you really are. That's the light. And if you can sit in that place, and then ask the question, just like a stone being dropped in, you know, this thing that I've done all my life, this marriage that I'm in, this career that I've got, this way of, of dealing with people that I've got, my addiction to my knowledge and being a brilliant person or my addiction to being cleverer than other people or better than other people in a certain way or my, you know, connection to money or whatever. Not, again, that there's anything wrong with those things. It's just when we come from the base of ourselves, then those things actually become useful again and um and we can flower into a new relationship or it may be time to let those things go something may just be let go and it's because we no longer actually resonate with it then it goes away from us quite naturally anyway and then that leaves room for something new to come and it's being open to that kind of movement and change if we're not capable of dealing with change though by dealing with our emotions, by actually embracing our emotions and being vulnerable enough for them to come into us, um, then we never receive the messages about life that are being sent to us. So, so we miss out so much. Anyway, this was uh, a bit heavy and I hadn't planned that at all. I was just going to talk about, I posted this Facebook thing and it's a whole new live and um, I launched my new website last night, which is uh, authenticliving.life, so www authenticliving.life if you want to know more about some of this stuff I'll post the link down below this video and I was excited also because the, the meditation CD is out now there's a few shops stocking it people have been buying it it's going out in little dribbles and um, it's on iTunes and that sort of thing but um, you know there's links below look on the website for that sort of stuff if you want to um, I'm trying to sort out the next retreat for those of you who follow um, about those things and uh, hopefully by the middle of this week coming, I should be able to kind of tell you something about the next retreat. I'll stop now because we're off to Manchester to have a bit of a mooch about and to go to the wonderful unicorn to do our shopping. And uh, if I see you about somewhere, then hello. And if you've been watching this and you've stayed till this point, then bless you. Thank you so much indeed. And um, have a wonderful Sunday. Lots of love to you and go well and have courage.